Yeah, yeah, I thought he was great. He's a he's a great speaker and a great writer. Um, but we also had private conversations, so I know how he thinks about these kind of matters. Yeah, um, well, that's why I was excited to ask you because after that religion <laughs> article, he wrote that article a few years back, and then he his new book is Hermetic Spirituality, and I was like, okay, he's yeah, yeah. Down. So we we also had uh, private conversations about uh, this matter of religion and spirituality, and I think that he strongly believes that at the moment. Uh, for him, I you know, in the conversation in the conversations we've had, which is also mirrored in the interview on my YouTube channel. It was more uh, sh um, moving from using the term philosophy to using the word spirituality as opposed to moving from using the term religion uh, to the term spirituality. So because he, what he was arguing is that the um, many of the practices that we call philosophy, especially when it comes to hermetic philosophy, they are actually hermetic spirituality. They are not philosophical. But um, they have been called philosophical because they have been um, made to appear more rational and less spiritual so that they could be more acceptable. They have also been Christianized. Uh, so the Corpus Hermeticum that we have, um, you know, the, the, the Hermetic texts that we have, you know, the ones that have survived, have survived because they were more acceptable to the um, Christian, um, you know, the, the Christian writers that uh, allowed for them to survive. And uh, some of those texts uh, were lost. And, the, um, and many translations are either Christianized or, in fact, one of the things that I was talking about with uh, Wouter is that he says that there is no good English translation of the Corpus Hermeticum. Uh, and he was because um, this is I was uh, about to do a, a Magus lecture because every month I do a lecture for my Magus and um, upper up, upper tiers um, level patrons. And I was uh, doing a, I was planning to do a lecture on the Corpus Hermeticum and Hermetic texts and Hermetic spirituality with my patrons because they were very fascinated by my interview with Professor Hanegraaff. And uh, I contacted him uh, because I was wondering whether there was a good English translation that he would recommend, because one of my patrons also asked for that. Um, but he said that he doesn't think that there is a good English translation. And I was also saying that there was a conversation going on uh, on that in a <laughs> in a private social media uh, space. But um so yeah, the one that he he recommends a, a German version and um, a French translation, but um, there's possibly going to be a one a good one in English in the coming years. But yeah, I think that the the issue is that quite often um, you 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 know through the past since there has been especially in the past. And now it is lessening, but there used to be a Christian hegemony, even when it comes to culture, then in order for things to be acceptable enough to survive, they needed to either resemble Christianity or a Christian, um, yeah, the Christian religion, the Christian mysticism in one way or another, or they needed to be rationalized and resemble philosophy, like, you know, Greek philosophy, for instance. So... Um, these are one of the two things that have happened with hermetic texts. So that's why he, that's one of the reasons why he argues that, he, you know, it's now time to recognize and acknowledge the fact that it's not hermetic philosophy, it's hermetic spirituality. And I agree with him. And I think that, uh, you know, it's the, the time has come for uh, this kind of acknowledgement, because if you read the hermetic texts, they are not really that philosophical. They are very practice based. Yeah. So they are I think that there are there are philosophical elements. So there are, I would say, philosophical elements for sure. But they are philosophical elements that are um geared toward you know the, the the reason why those philosophical elements are there are to be are uh, because they want to be conducive to yours to the spiritual practice of the reader of or the person that is trying to employ the things that are written in those texts so i agree with him 
that is more spirituality than it is philosophy. And also there's the matter that uh, calling it spirituality perhaps allows to broaden uh, religious studies as a scholarly field in universities. But I think that this is also happening to, in religious studies more generally around the world. So the, the category of religion has been challenged by many religious studies scholars. So even those outside of historicism, religious studies scholars have challenged the category of religion. They have okay. uh, highlighted, they have highlighted the fact that religion is not just you know, the so-called word religions, and it's not just uh, religions that resemble a certain structure, mainly a monotheistic kind of structure, that religion is, you know, um, goes, you know, the, the category of religion should be more inclusive to the other religious forms that do not resemble that specific structure. So, yeah, I think that that's also important to highlight. This is a conversation that has been going on um, in religious studies for quite some time now.